The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in print and e-book formats on Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios and sponsored by international award-winning author Mia Mohsen Zia of Missing. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on over 40 podcast platforms, as well as HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, and the TheMikeWagnerShow.com. We can be heard in over 100 countries, featuring over 1,000 well-known and amazing guests throughout the globe, and named one of the top 100 global podcasts in the New York Weekly Times, Hollywood Entertainment News, Los Angeles Weekly Times, Apple, and Chartable. So sit back and relax and enjoy another great episode of the award-winning Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios and brought to you by official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We're here at Traffic Gentleman. He's a brand new author, born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee, with a passion for weaving captive narratives and um, a deep rooted uh, connection to the South. We'll talk about that. He's been influenced by music, people, challenges, and triumphs, and a little of uh, TCB in the background there. And the new book is based strongly on his own experiences and it's about. Uh, a man named Tommy who couldn't uh, move on from Memphis, emotional abuse of the child, successful businessman, and also a need for healing beneath the jet setting lifestyle in search for peace and uh, for, for forgiveness and everything else. And the book is called From Punishment to Peace, The Road Trips to Forgiveness. So live, ladies and gentlemen, the Plus Studio is in beautiful downtown Atlanta, Georgia. He's been there, entering there everywhere, born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee, and going from Memphis to Atlanta. We'll talk about the journey. It's it's also um, talk about the book, From Punishment to Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, the multi-talented Tom Harrison. Tom, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Good evening to you, Mike. Thank you for letting me be a, a part of your show. Well, it's great to have you on board, Tom. And it looks like uh, your guys in the background are doing a little shake, rattle, and roll, and they're happy to be on the show, too. Elvis Elvis is moving tonight, that's for sure. There you go. And a little bit of a uh, peanut butter and a banana, I could tell you that, too. So. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so you're a new author, born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee, with a passion for weaving captive narratives and also a deeper connection to the South. Then do you're influenced by music, people, challenges, and triumphs. And as a book based uh, strongly on own experiences, um, and it's about a, a – a, a boy or man named Tommy couldn't uh, move on from Memphis and emotionally abused a child, successful businessman, um, searching basically for a need for healing and uh, beneath a jet setting lifestyle and search for peace and also um, for forgiveness and just about everything else for 40 plus years. And you have a book called From Punishment to Peace, which is Road Trips Forgiveness. So going from Memphis to Atlanta before getting all that time, tell us how you first got started. Wow. Uh well, let's just say that the whole journey in 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 this book has really started, um, I guess, with a couple of teenagers, sixteen year olds, who were diddling in the back seat of a of a Chevy in a, in a drive in in Memphis, and uh, a few months later, um, they end up having me, and it was a it, it was one of those kind of childhoods that would that was uh, this this dynamic between a loving mother and a father who didn't want me. And made it a point to say that pretty much every day of his of, of his of the first twenty years of my life. And so uh, he I guess through the lens of uh, of hindsight, uh, my, my my father was somewhat of a challenged. Uh, he was he was he was um, he was bipolar. He had uh, spent most of his time um, challenged by that. Uh, had been married six times. Wow. Uh, it just it, it it really blamed his son me for not being able to achieve anything in life or not, and, and and yet he still achieved much uh he was a good businessman he just for whatever reason uh, i was in his way and so um but i spent about 30 years trying to outlive that and that was really the challenge as much as anything mike is that uh somehow i kind of pulled away from that barely got into college and once i began to experience life and uh, experience some forms of, of success I became an overachiever. In fact, I came pretty addicted, but became pretty addicted to overachievement. Uh, so 
one job, one good job had to be another higher paying job. It had to be a more important job. It had to be a job not here in the city I'm in, but across the country. And I did that four different times. Wow. Uh, and it wasn't one house. It had to be a vacation home. And it wasn't a Jaguar. It had to be two, two Jaguars. It was just, uh, it was an obsession that I ended up having uh, that I, I couldn't fill the hole that I, that, that my dad and I really kind of dug, uh, dug in me and my soul through my first 20 years of life. And so um, all of a sudden, and not really all of a sudden, it kind of came crashing down after about three decades of really pursuing the words, uh, the words that I think every son wants to hear that uh, his father's proud of him. And I never heard those words. Uh, but things kind of came together in a pretty abrupt way uh, where where my, my my business ended up shutting down and thus I didn't have an office to go to. And uh, my second marriage uh, had failed. And so I didn't have a home to go to. Uh, and then ultimately, or at least around that same time, my, my my father suddenly passed away. So I didn't. So the obsession of trying to prove him wrong uh was was all taken away from me and so i was left with stuff and around me and just really the trappings of anyone would claim would be a successful life but uh it ended up just i i, I didn't have a soul i didn't have uh, i didn't have meaning uh, i didn't have a purpose and so i decided to kind of shut everything down in my life and begin to kind of roll everything back and go back to uh as far back as i could really back through my childhood and and and, and be around the people that, that I grew up with. And there was one person in particular, who was the same age relative of mine, an uncle, who uh, who was also in a, a, a very abusive home. His abuse was much more difficult than mine. But we grew up together pretty much in lockstep. And, um, uh, but we ended up kind of just going in separate directions, completely separate directions. I went this overachievement, uh, kind of addiction to materialism and hedonism and, and, and stuff. Uh, and he fell into a trap of, of drugs and alcohol uh, at the age of 13 and, wow. uh, and really couldn't stop and had been in and out of prison or the, the, the judicial system at least four dozen times. Uh, he'd been homeless most of his life. And so we came together after about two months. I'm sorry, excuse me, 20 years, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and, and began to kind of share our times together and tried to figure out the, the, the pieces of our lives and why we ended up um, being really so far apart. And yet it's so it's at the same point in time in our lives, uh, very difficult times in our lives. And uh, it, we went through a series of, of road trips together. We, uh, we, we first met in Memphis again by, uh, after 20 years. And, uh, and that began the kind of peeling the onion of what happened in his life and what happened in my life and how they overlapped each other. And, and it really was pointed in the direction of quite a bit of abuse by our fathers. And, and so we kept seeing each other over about seven months. We had, we spent uh, we, we we took four trips together, mainly across Tennessee from Memphis to where his where his father was still alive in a nursing home on the other side of the state, and uh, uh, and so to see the experiences of what my uncle John, his name is John, my uncle went through, uh, began to kind of melt me into and began to understand how someone who had nothing and, and had all the reason in the world to be mad at the world and certainly mad at, at the, at the man that, that, that pushed him in the direction of trying to heal through drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, the experience of having watched my uncle spend time with his father uh, broke me. I mean, it broke me in a very positive way. Uh, the, the expression of love, the expression of sincerity, the, 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 uh, the, it was just, it was overwhelming. And I had that chance to really understand for the first time what that meant. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and so, but the, the, the book is about that. The book is also about two guys who, after going through these trips, through these experiences, begin to realize that there, maybe there is some hope of finding the other side of all of this, uh, uh of these scars that have been left uh, on us. Uh, in the pursuit of peace. And so 
we began that uh, that part of a journey. Uh, he went through a series of of uh, residential rehabs. I was very proud of the fact that we had gotten into gotten him into re residential rehab. Uh, but it wasn't one; it was six. Uh, so he kept he, he struggled through that, and then I also went through some things with me. And uh, but in the end, um, I can't. I, I, I'd love to tell you the end of it there, Mike. But uh, <laughs> uh, but but in the end, it's a, it's an amazingly satisfying story. Uh, there is some tragedy at the end, but uh, to 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 have experienced the the, the level of of depth of uh, pain, and yet how I saw him rise above that really taught me enough to uh, to begin the process of not only forgiving my abuser, um, but also beginning the, the 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 path of forgiving myself because abusers end up abusing uh, one way or the other. They that's the, the, the the, those that are damaged end up really doing much damage around them. And they don't even know it. I mean, in many cases, they think, no, I'm fine. I'm not doing that. I will never be like my father. Unfortunately, uh, after saying that hundreds of times, I ended up being more like my father than I ever imagined. Mm -hmm. And so it was this wonderful experience with my uncle that really shaped me and changed me. And, 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 uh, and, and I'm very proud of what he went through to try to get to where he was. He wanted to go as well. Mm -hmm. so. and, and and certainly a lot as well too and give credit to uncle and some of the people in your life and uh what was that one precise moment that uh simply influenced you into what you're doing so what was that moment that simply said light bulb go off your head uh well you know as, well, you, you mean as far as writing the book is concerned uh that it's what you're so doing and everything so yes uh-huh uh, because i originally I originally had not planned on writing the book it was strictly just i've got to find a a version of me that didn't exist before. And I think it was, I think it was the, it was the immediate combination of, of closing down my business, losing, uh, you know, ending my second marriage and, and my, my, and primarily my father's passing when I really, when I came to the conclusion that I had nothing to show for what I had accomplished uh, because the person that the the object of what I wanted to prove that that the man I wanted to prove all that that, that he was wrong and what what he thought about me over the years as a youth, uh, what, the fact that he was wrong, he was gone. I couldn't I, I didn't have that opportunity to do that. So uh, mm -hmm. that was really kind of the wake up call that said, I've got to find another person in me. There's there's because uh, I didn't like who I was. Mm hmm. Right. Yes. And and of course, you know, you, you do have some influences, you mainly by music, people, challenges, triumphs as well. And a journey going from Memphis to Atlanta. We'll talk about with author Tom Harrison of A Punishment to Peace. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia molson -Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia molson -Zia. available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those who love be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson has got great reviews. And Evil Evan and Joyce by Howard Celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and Manilis. So grab your copy today for it goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com or 40 podcast platforms. Heard in 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, Odyssey, Apple Music, Google Play, Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, TuneIn. Also heard on BitChute, Rumble, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Follow us on social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and more. Take us with you on any mobile device. And for great gift ideas, 24-7, 365, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. Makes great gifts 24-7, all year round for family, friends, and loved ones. Go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. 
And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and Cynthia for great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles, also T-shirts, Pop Suck Utilities, Phone Cases, and more. Amazon.com slash me and Cynthia. Check it out today. And support the Mike Weiner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Weiner Show.com. We're here with the amazing uh, born and raised um, author, raised in Memphis, Tennessee, now living in Atlanta, Georgia, Tom Harrison with From Punishment to Peace here on the Mike Weiner Show. And um, before we talk about your book, uh, tell us about the journey going from Memphis to Atlanta. Well, I wish it was a straight uh, from point A to point B. And you can see that you mentioned uh, TCB and a, uh, and a lightning bolt. That's that's Elvis is taking care of business in a flash. And so I've been a business guy for, business guy that's for 40 original. years. I like that one. Yeah, TCB uh, yeah, in a yeah, flash. That's, that's a, yeah, it's, that, was his, uh, that was his logo on his airplane. And I mean, it's uh, probably on a bunch of pills, just like you've got yours. But anyway. Um, no, it, from Memphis to Atlanta was not a straight line. I, 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 I left. In fact, one of the things that, that, that someone had mentioned to me about the book was it mentioned about the characters, the two uh, pr protagonists, John, the uncle, Tommy, the nephew, the antagonist being John's father, who's still alive at the time. Uh, but I, I think for all of us, uh, it, our hometowns can be both a protagonist and an antagonist. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's the case for, for me, for sure, as far as Memphis is concerned. It's a beautiful town. It's a wonderful place. I love uh, gr growing up there. I uh, had wonderful family around me. I just, of course, had the challenges of a father. And uh, But uh, as uh, because of the difficulties through my teenage years with him, uh, I had to get out of there. And so the minute I graduated college, I was off to Alaska. That's wow. how far away I had to go to kind of find a different, uh, kind of get away from Memphis for, for a while. So uh, I was in business. I was a CPA by my first career hmm. and had an opportunity to go up to both Fairbanks and Anchorage. Nice. Uh, then uh, ended up in Washington, D.C. as part of my career in Los Angeles for 12 years. Uh, back to Memphis once or twice and then uh, landed in Atlanta in the Georgia area for the last 15, 16 years. So, wow, that is amazing. And of yeah. course, uh, what, are, what are some adventures you did in um, in Atlanta? Well, uh, you know, it, Atlanta is a is kind of what it, what 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 it would like to call the the the, the capital of the South, uh, and so it really is. It's very it, it's it, it's grown quite a bit uh, thanks to Delta and and, and Chick Fil A and, and Coca Cola and a lot of a lot of major corporations that are headquartered here. But uh, Atlanta is just a wonderful town, uh, and and uh, so I think someone was predicting it could be one at the. At its growth rate, it could be the largest city in the country by 2015. That, that might I, be wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest with you. Everybody wants that to go south. Everybody likes could. warm weather. Everybody likes them peaches. Yeah. And, of course, you know, the um the film industry has been booming like crazy over there. So I forget Los Angeles. Just go to Atlanta. Of course, you know, the music industry. Next thing you know, it, you won't be Los Angeles. will be Nashville. You know, it could be very well in Atlanta. It's like a lot That's of true. people are heading over there. Yes. That's true. So. But Memphis was a great place, uh, separate of everything else, as far as what we've been talking about. Uh, the music, the food, if you like barbecue, it's, it, 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 of course, Kansas City and Texas would probably are, and, and, and the Carolinas would probably argue against that. But <laughs> Memphis, uh, Memphis is on the map for sure when it comes to barbecue. But uh, uh, and, and, and I go there from time to time. I still have family members there. But uh, uh, and in fact, the, the cover of the book, I've actually got it here. It's got the. It's got a drawing of the of the bridge over over Me over the Mississippi River in Memphis. Mm. So, uh, um, oh, oh so. okay. Can you take the book and uh, put it up for to. our viewers yeah. and uh, can uh, see it? Yeah, sure. Up From closer. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sure. Okay, so that's um, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, that's a beautiful bridge, and that is, and that is going over Memphis. That's going over. Um, oh, that's going over the Mississippi River. Mississippi. Yeah. Okay, I was just trying to think which one it was. I had a double yeah. check, but. Oh my gosh, that looks beautiful. So it sounds like you've never been there. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The closest to it is Louisville, Kentucky, but I did have a chance to go down to Memphis, but that kind of fell through. And, um, you know, being on the I-57, we were attempted to go through Memphis, but then we end up like um, going to St. Louis and everything else. We thought about it and we just said that, um, you know, we went to St. Louis and, uh, you know, you know, just checked out some baseball, a little bit of barbecue sure. and everything yeah. like that. Yeah, but there um, you go. There you Good go. Job. Yeah. So, so we got that general idea and everything. And I looked and went, Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, it, it was, it, it, I enjoy it. It's a great, it's got a great culture, got great uh, character to it. It, uh, uh, but you know what, it, it, in my growing up years, it, it, uh, one of the things about Memphis, it's, it, it, it seems to have not gotten 
over its its racial challenges, and and that's and that's kind of a shame. Uh, I mean, uh, the the tragedy of, in '68 of, uh, of 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 Dr. King's assassination, I think, right? Yeah, has mm. really put put a put a kind of a, a a pall on on the ability of the city to kind of shake away. Right, from a pall, a scar, a a deep yeah. wound, everything like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, again, uh, I, I there are times I miss it. Then, then, then again, there there are times where I go, okay, I've I've had plenty of time there, and I've got good memories, but have moved on. So, but anyway, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, music has been a, a big influence, uh, not just Elvis, but more as well too. And I can tell in the background that you really get into Elvis. Well, it's funny. I in, I, I remember uh working in memphis at the time and 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 some pretty important people from business from a company was coming to memphis and uh and and the business i was i was working in they were we, we were all nervous about these people being in town the first time and we, we wanted to put on the, the, the best uh, our, our best face and and the minute they get off the plane and we're, we're, we're thinking we're gonna go show them what we're what, what what they were coming to memphis to see and and the first thing out of my mouth is we don't want to go see that we want to go to elvis's house and I'm just like, <laughs> you know, I like, I, you know, and, and Memphians, it's like, I, I don't know, it's, it's probably like New Yorkers, uh, you know, seeing the uh, the Statue of Liberty or just whatever's famous there. No one who lives where they are tip, uh, would, would goes to the uh, to, to the tourist places. It's because one, it's not that they don't like them. It's just they go there anytime they want to and they just never go. Uh, and so when outer towners come in, it's, uh, uh, it, it, that's probably the one and only time that people would be interested in taking them to, to, to any place like that. But so the, these people wanted to take us, uh, wanted to be taken to Elvis's house. So the one and only time I've been there was when I was entertaining a bunch of, uh, important people coming into town, wanted to, wanted to, I wanted to do business with, and lo and behold, they wanted to just go to Elvis's house, <laughs> but whatever it's worth. Or a little bit more, not just TCB, but more than that, like TCB in a flash for you. So, <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh my gosh, yeah. And besides Elvis, so what are some of your other musical influences as well, too? Well, um, well, you know, Memphis is is certainly the uh, even though Cleveland claims to be the, uh, the the capital of rock and roll, mm -hmm. uh, Memphis wanted that really bad when that when the uh, when that was set up, but. Uh, but you know what? I, I think there's a lot of soul in Memphis. There's just a lot of good Christian soul, uh, Christian, uh, uh, just beautiful singers there. But just uh, Beale Street, there's a lot of music down there, down in Beale Street in downtown. And so uh, it's just, um, you know, it, I think Memphis is one of, the, one of the major cities in the country that just has a wonderful character. I, I know for a fact that Memphis is, is mentioned more in, in music than any other city in the country, any in the world, I think, from what mm -hmm. I've heard. So it makes sense to me. Right, yeah. And of course, you know, that also plays in the book as well, too, along with the yes. other challenges and other triumphs as well, too. You know, not just tied to music, but people and more as well, too. So it's like everything else call, all coming together. And of course, you know, I think of it as like, you know, music does play a big part. People play a big part. Oh, it does. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think we have a connection to music. All of us have some form or another a connection to music and it's usually born in our in our youth. So uh, uh, no, there's there's a lot of character running around in Memphis, that's for sure. <laughs> and and certainly Dean as well, too. And of course, uh, what else do you want uh, readers to get from the book? Well, I, I think that it, one, someone asked me right around the time that I finished the book, what what would be the what, what do you, what would I want a, a reader to take away from the book? And I and I really hadn't thought about it for, from uh, up until that point. And so uh, my wife and I kind of locked ourselves in in a room for for uh, however long it was, and and we really came up with what we would call the five R's of peace. Mm. Uh, and, and it really revolves around putting yourself, well, whatever you're carrying, whatever punishment that that, that one is carrying. Uh, I think it's really important to figure out a way to get that out. Uh, to uh, so the first R would be risk or risk it. Uh, take the risk to say I've got I've got to change where I am. I'm carrying this, and that's what I happened to me. I was carrying uh, the, the punishment that I'd received as a youth, um, and for 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 three decades, and I didn't know what to do with it until. Until I, I came to that conclusion or came to the decision that I've got to figure out a way to offload it, to understand it, to to learn from it and maybe to heal from it. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, The second is reveal. Um, Find a person or find a group. uh, And and a person could be counseling of some sort. A group could be a small group. But just put yourself in an environment where someone will sit down and you just let it loose. Open up. Say what say whatever it is that you're carrying. And and, uh, I've, I've been around small groups with men. Men are tough. Men are extremely tough to open up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but they're but we're the guys that oh, we're the people that probably need it more than anybody. Um, women are uh, from everything I've I've been around and seen. Uh, it's much easier for for women to really open up and, and and discuss whatever's whatever they're carrying. But men, it's tough. Um, but if we can figure out a way to reveal that in front of other like minded guys who care, then that that can be the start of an amazing journey to peace. Um, the third R is receive. Uh, it, it's it's one thing to let it out. It's another to then start to receive uh, responses from others to for, that that are beginning to care about you. As you open up, it's amazing how many people uh, begin to relate to what you got. Uh, you always think that whatever punishment you're carrying, you're the only one in the world's doing it. And in reality, there are a lot of people that have gone through what what we each have gone through, and so to to be prepared to receive what others have of experience is an amazing step again towards peace. The fourth, I think is the one that could be the most important that leads up to that finish line. If you want to call peace a finish line and that's respond, um, exercising the empathy muscle, uh, being in an environment where again, in counseling, you're hearing, you're, 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 you're hearing the advice after, after kind of revealing it. Um, but you're not hearing the experiences of the of the psychologist uh, that 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 they've gone through that you can relate to. But getting in a room of guys, and that's what my experiences were, getting in a room of guys who begin to offload what they're they've experienced and the challenges they've had in life, and to be able to lean into that. That's an amazing part of the whole process. You 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 you're turning this around and really becoming an important part of someone else's healing. And mm-hmm. then finally, uh, the finish line is what I call the, the last R is what I call the, uh, is the finish line of peace. And that's, that, that's reconcile. Um, forgiving your wrongdoers, including forgiving yourself, because you know, you're the wrongdoer too. If you've been wronged, you know that there's got to have been one or more people that, that you've wronged that one that, that I've wronged, and I know that I've wronged. And so uh, to, to get to the point of true understanding of who you are and get to that level of peace, in my opinion, it's, it's coming to that genuine conclusion that, uh, that you can forgive yourself and others for all the pain that has been thrown out and, and about. And I think that's so important. So mm. and, that's kind of the big takeaway from the book. I, I hope anyway. Mm-hmm. And, and what are the five R's again? What do you call it? Five R's of? Yes. Yeah, five R's of peace. Uh, to, five to, R's to, of peace. Okay. Peace. All right. Well, We'll uh we'll put that into play here for most of us, and then and Thank also you. uh and also where can we find your uh, book at and what's your website? Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, it's it, it's going to be released in February fifteenth, uh through through uh, through Amazon, uh both ebook and uh, and paperback, uh and I and, and hardback through my website uh from punishment to peace dot com. There's a there's actually I'm pretty proud of this. There's an amazing trailer on the at the at the main page of the of the website that I highly recommend. I, I had a guy that that, that created it for me. It's just an, a brilliant guy who who uh, a two minute trailer on it. So uh, if if any of your wonderful audience has a moment and can look at the website, I'd be grateful. But from punishment to peace dot com. We will certainly check that out. What's coming up for author Tom Harrison of From Punishment to Peace? We'll find out in just one minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios, and brought to you by official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Muscles and Missing. We'll be back with author Tom Harrison of From Punishment to Peace. After this time, the Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1 800 303 3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. 
Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to the Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with author Tom Harrison of From Punishment to PC Road Trips. For forgiveness us here on the Mike Wagner Show. A really good insight to uh, the travels and the peace and everything and all tying together. And uh, just a couple more things, Tom. What else can we expect from 2024 and beyond? Wow. Wow. Well, um, I, 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 this is my, my first book, as you you stated in the beginning of your of your show. I, I really don't know what direction it, it's it's going to go, but I'm really excited about the interest. Uh, uh, I, I I love the opportunity to kind of get out and and uh, and do some book signings. Uh, I've I'm really starting that process, and so, but just really having opportunities to spend time with you and your audience just. Those kind of experiences are just amazing for me. I've never had that kind of experience before. And so uh, 2024 is really starting off great in this regard. And so, again, I've got to just thank you very much for, 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 for the, and you've honored me for being able to be on your show. And also a big thanks to Elvis as well, too, for being part of it as well, too, a little bit of TCB. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I love you very much. I had to throw that in there. I'm sorry. That's uh, okay. It's a good thing. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Oh, in my career. Okay. Well, uh, I've had a limited writing career. It's been about that long. So uh, uh, I would say that, it, that from a writing perspective, it's got to be John Grisham. Um, I've got every one of his signed first editions. I've got my name in one of his books and he wrote a lot about uh, stories about Memphis. So uh, as far as an author's concern, uh, I would definitely say it would be him. And uh, uh, gosh, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a business guy, uh, I'm a business consultant by day. I'm not sure who's influenced me there. I just, I've had a lot of, but in, in a really good long career, you've got to have that one or two or 10 people that have just walked beside you and kind of guide you in the direction. And I've been, been very fortunate to have several people that have done that. And so I'm trying to capture my opportunity to do the same thing for others right now. So it's been kind of a fun journey. It sounds like a fun journey as well, too. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Well, as far as writing a book's concerned, just have a lot of patience because it took me 10 years uh, and and the and be prepared that, that the editing process uh, will be the hardest thing you've ever gone through in your life. Because you you, you take this baby that you feel like you've born and, and and shaped and molded and and crafted. And all of a sudden someone comes in and go, this doesn't sound right. right. And so that's right. And so I, I, I had a year of figuring that one out. And so. Uh, anyone that would have any kind of an interest in writing a book, I highly encourage it. Uh, and, but but just be but strap yourself in for a roller coaster ride when it comes to editing because it's it's not the easiest process I've ever been through. Mm -hmm. And what and I'm buckling up right now as we speak as well too. I'm thinking about a book, but I'm glad you gave me that advice too. And just about everybody who wants to write a book, so that's a good thing. So yes. <laughs> we're here with author Tom Harrison of From Punishment to Peace: The Road Trips for Forgiveness here on the Mike Wagner Show. Tom, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love have you back once again. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your book? Thank you. It's again, it's it's www.frompunishmenttopeace.com. Uh, after uh, February fifteenth, you can buy it online there or on Amazon. Uh, it'll be, it'll be offered in ebook and in uh, paperback. We'll certainly check that out. Once again, Tom, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. Wish you all the best. And Tom, you definitely have a great future ahead of you. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it very much. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-303. 
888-888-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show. Brought to you by international award-winning author Mia Mosin-Zia of Missing. And powered by Sonic Web Studios. Be sure to join us again on over 40 podcast platforms. And, of course, on the themikewagnershow.com. HamiltonRadio.net and Diamonds FM. Don't forget to support our program with a generous donation at the MikeWagnerShow.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>